Uh, yeah, we live in a fallen world, and Jesus is the light. Amen. Uh, today, it's my honor to introduce uh, an amazing young man who reflects his light in our midst. So, Ricky Vargas is today's chapel speaker. Ricky's a wonderful student. You probably know that. A great conversationalist and an incredible friend, uh, I think, to everybody who's met him. He's a precious gift to the College of Business, the whole Northwest community, uh, and the body of Christ. In light of his academic excellence, leadership, and dedication to enlivening his God-given talents, the staff, faculty, and dean in the College of Business have selected him as the 2021 recipient of the Coradella Harchi Award for Outstanding Student in the College of Business. Amazing honor. I think they put his name on a plaque, so it's, it's immortalized. And um, then they also give him some money. So he'll honor you at the airy, I guess. Um, <laughs> Dr. and Mrs. J. Calvin Holsinger established this award in honor of their daughter and their lifelong commitment to Christian higher education. It's given to a selected College of Business senior who develops and uses their God-given talents to help others, Ricky, demonstrates exceptional academic work, Ricky, his handwriting, by the way, is incredible, um, and clearly aims to integrate faith and learning and business, liberal arts, humanities, as a community member and Christian. Um, and just for fun, I might mix up his speech. No, I wouldn't do that. He's, he's an incredible friend. So please uh, join me in congratulating Brother Ricky Vargas. Thank you, Brother Nelson, for that introduction. It's always a pleasure to hear you speak. Such an honor to receive this award. Before I begin, I'd like to thank the Holsinger Harchi family, the College of Business, and Dean Rowe for this wonderful opportunity. Without them, I would not be speaking to all of you today. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Ricky. If we have not met yet, I'd love to get the pleasure to get to know you. Um, so refreshing to see all of you here today, whether that's in person or on the live stream. Uh, hopefully your spring break was restful and that you've been able to adjust back to school. Today I have the tremendous privilege of talking to you on behalf of the College of Business as the senior speaker. Uh, but before I get into my message, let's have a quick word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for just who you are every day and today. That we may approach you this faithful Friday morning and find rest in the comfort of your presence and your peace. I pray that in this next few moments, we may focus all our hearts on you, God, and as your messenger as I speak from you, I pray that I may speak to the condition of my hearers so that my message will not only be timely, but also timeless. Let your Holy Spirit work through me and anoint my words with your blessings. I pray that my message today and my testimony may further your kingdom, God, and let it be worthy of your praise and your glory. I ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So my message today is actually quite short and simple. As I was thinking of what I want to speak about, I came across my Northwest ID photo. Gio, if you can pull that up. Talk about a bad picture, am I right? <laughs> so that was freshman year me. I was jet lagged. I just flew like 8,000 miles away from home. Um, all I wanted to do was sleep, but everything in me pushed myself to do orientation and the whole thing. Uh, and this picture perfectly sums up my mood then. But aside from all of that, as I look closer at this picture, it made me think about where I was back then when I first came to NU, who I wanted to be, and how much I've gone through to get to that moment. I don't know about you guys, Jimmy can cut the picture. <laughs> but I don't know about you guys, but every time I look at an old photo of myself or my Facebook archives, I just think about how much I've grown in so many different areas of my life from when that picture was taken and where I stand today, and how God time and time again has showed up in the process. So today, the topic of my message will be growing in God. And really what I want to cover is where I've been, where I'm at right now, and where I'm going in the future. To my first point, where I have been, just to give a little backstory, um, my family were Buddhists or atheists to be more precise since my grandparents they came from mainland China and migrated all the way to Indonesia. In addition to this, uh, I was actually born into an unhappy home as my parents grew more and more separated. We were in the process of moving into our new home 
And I remember having to live back and forth since my mom would stay at the new place and my dad would stay at the old. One night, as I was staying at the old house, I was woken up in the middle of the night by my dad and was dragged to the car. And all of a sudden, me, my brother, my dad, my grandparents, um, all of us, we were just going somewhere and being two at the time. And I think my brother was around four. I don't remember much of what happened since it went by so fast and I had no idea what was going on. Um, essentially, my brother and I were brought down to a rundown part of the city where my dad essentially took us away from our mom for 10 whole months. Apparently, my mom was in Singapore at the time and had no idea what was happening back home. All she knew was that that week, um, we were staying at the old house and that was, uh, she would see us again soon uh, when she came back to Jakarta. When she did, she was beyond confused. Um, uh, she called everyone, my dad, who definitely didn't pick up, um, our maid and the driver, and they had no clue what was um, going on. I think this was when she realized that my dad had intentionally abducted us. She was lost. She didn't know where to begin, where to find us. And, you know, being a mom, you could never imagine um, being separated with your kids and not knowing for how long that's going to go for. But by the grace of God, this was actually the period when she found Christ and grew her faith. She studied the Bible arduously and prayed every night. She told me that one of the nights she received a vision from God, having prayed for months. She told me that in this, in, in this dream, she was walking out of a nula shop with both of us uh, on her arms, uh, me on the right and my brother on the left. She tells me that until today, she still remembers this dream vividly. After receiving this vision from God, her heart found rest and comfort in God that one day she would be reunited with us one, uh, soon. Long story short, after months of going to court and finally went in custody, that vision was fulfilled. The very same day she took us back before leaving um, the place our dad took us to, all of us actually ate noodles, and turns out that noodle shop was just one block down the road to where uh, our dad kept us. I remember not recognizing my mom at all when seeing her face, again for the very first time after 10 months. Soon after, the three of us moved into the new home and became a Christian family ever since. However, that's not to say that all of our problems stopped there. It was tough growing up in a broken family. My mom had to work hard in order to provide for us, and I just remember dealing with a lot, a lot of loneliness growing up. Um, don't get me wrong, I had a lot of friends, but deep down there was this sense of emptiness that just kind of reverberated everywhere I went. Fast forward to when I came to Northwest, I, I actually had no idea what was uh, what to expect, uh, and you wasn't really my first choice as I looked uh, into several other business schools, and it felt like a place where I ended up rather than like a place I wanted to be at. Um, I also brought that sense of being lost and not knowing who I was or where I stood when I first came here in spite of always being focused in what I wanted to be in terms of my career. It wasn't until a pursuit or a revive when I finally found my belonging in Christ, and more importantly, I found my belonging um, here at NU2. I was up in the balcony when Reckless Love was playing and hearing the words that God's love chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99, just made me broke down in tears. I could feel his love filling the depths of my heart and cleaning the void that I had. I think that was one of the first moments that I realized and said to myself, this is exactly where God wants me to be. And even looking back at the times where I had to struggle or persist through hard times, he guided me every single step of the way and used those moments to bring me back to him. You know, I've always wondered why God constantly pursues us even after mankind has forsaken him time and time again. We see this many times in the Bible. Uh, it can even be said that the whole narrative of the Bible surrounds this theme of God's pursuit of us. In the very beginning itself, um, after Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, they did not run towards God, they actually ran away from him, hiding amongst the trees of the garden. But God pursued them. Genesis 3.9 says, The Lord God called to the man, Where are you? This was the first missionary effort as the Creator sought out his lost creatures. Truly, as God's children, we cannot separate ourselves from the pursuit of God. The impulse to pursue God originates from God himself and the reason he created, in the, created us in the first place. God delights in his works and enjoys his creation. The Apostle John says, frankly, in Revelations, that God's purpose behind creation 
uh, was his own pleasure. God is the creator, and creativity is his nature. God is happy in his love for all that he has made, so much so that he has instilled an image of himself in us when he formed us out of dust. Therefore, a part of God lives within us. And as much as we try to uh, turn away and hide from him, this very spirit of God reflected in our created beings always brings us back to him. In fact, we become lost whenever we disregard the image of God within us for we are going against the very tide of our creation and why we stand on this earth today. God created us simply out of love and yearns for us to be in a love relationship with him. All he asks from us is to delight in his love, remain in his will, and live the life he intended for us to live. Transformation in God actually demands and requires that we surrender to this perfect love of God. We need to soak and bask in it so that this love becomes our identity. And when we ask ourselves, who am I? We answer, I am loved by God. Consequently, everything we do, all that we are, and all that we'll ever be comes back to this love. That our purpose here on earth, the meaning of our lives, is to reflect this love in our image of God through loving him with all our heart, soul, and mind. However, sometimes it's hard for us to fulfill this purpose, uh, which brings me to my second point, where I am at right now. Earlier this year, I was in a pretty dark place. I haven't been back home to see my family for more than a year, and the longer it got, the harder it felt for me to uh, call this place home. It felt as if I couldn't find my belonging here anymore, especially since COVID hit. And because of this, I felt lost in my belonging in Christ. That as soon as times are hard, I lost sight of who I am in him. I was so used to how Northwest was when I was a freshman, and I was comfortable in the fact that in the coming years, things would look more or less the same. I felt safe in being certain that the future would look the way it was going to. However, the reality is much different from that. This past year for me has been filled with uncertainty. I'm sure most of you feel the same way. All the plans that I had were scrambled from as simple as the summer classes I was planning to take, the internships I was uh, applying to, which eventually was canceled, and the flights home that were restricted um, because the borders were closed. The biggest lesson I learned from the entire pandemic is that we constantly live in uncertainty, that God is the only one in control. Sometimes a life of uncertainty is actually the life we're called to, because a life of uncertainty leads us to surrender, not to the circumstances or hardships in life, but to surrender completely to the perfect love and will of God. Through uncertainty, we become reliant on him, reliant on his plans, reliant on his strength, reliant on his grace, and reliant on his power. Trusting in him completely becomes part of who we are and how we live. And for us to fulfill that calling, it takes a lot of time, practice, and also suffering. We need to constantly pursue God as much as he pursues us. And this involves an active practice of our faith through scripture and prayer in our daily lives. And I believe this to be where we should be at at all times. Constantly pursuing him in everything we do. And sometimes this, this is hard to do. We often give up when we can't make sense of a situation, whether it's looking at the past and not being able to find closure or looking at the future and not knowing what's to come. But all of that doesn't matter. Whatever the condition or circumstances, we must rejoice in him. Um, and in Ecclesiastes 3, it states, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Ups and downs are inevitable in life. The only thing we can do to persist through it is to endure in God and live within the present state of him. True faith stands on the foundation of resting in what God is and loving him for all that he is. It is surrendering, surrendering completely to God's I am that I am. You know, when you're in love with someone, you don't really focus on what they give you or what they can bring to the table. You simply love them 
for their attributes and all there is to them. You want to know them to the depths of their heart and you want to spend every single second with them. And when times are hard, your focus is still on them um, and you give them your all because they're all that matters to you. This is how God feels about us every single day when he pursues us. And all that he asks is that we remain in him as he remains in us. Just last month, I was so overwhelmed with, what, uh, uh, with where I was going in the future. I was stuck between choosing to stay here in the States or to go back home to Indonesia. I was scared of the uncertainty of both, that if I chose one over the other, I'd make a mistake and regret not taking the other. I was picturing all the different scenarios of what the future would look like for me if I stay here in the States or if I went straight back home. And as I compared the two, I really couldn't um, decide where to go. And this was tough because the deadlines to apply for jobs and my visa were coming up. It got to the point where I couldn't focus on anything I was doing at the time. I felt numb and I was constantly playing scenarios in my mind of all the what ifs. I needed to focus on one plan as I had to balance my future with my current life as a senior college student. Um, so I eventually went to one of the business professors here and after telling him my dilemma, he told me, as much planning as you do, you'll know where you'll be in two years, in two years. At first I was like, duh, that's helpful. But as I unpack what he says, there's actually a lot of truth to it. We honestly never really know where God will take us and how tomorrow would look like. Because in a single minute, everything can change. I think this past year has proven that. All we can do is remain faithful in him, focus on the now, and be fruitful to his kingdom. And this leads me to my last point. In looking to ahead to where I'm going in the future, I think it's safe to say that I have no idea of what God has in store for me. All my life, I know that I want to go into business and corporate finance, but only after coming to Northwest have I questioned this in terms of my faith, um, my calling, and my vocation. Sometimes in life, God, God gives us those choices, and if that's the path he wants us to go to, he'll open those doors. I have my passions, my ambitions, and my goals, but what is my will compared to his? In the search of where I'm going in the future, I need to be in constant fellowship with him so that I know what I'm doing as part of what he has in store for me. What matters is that whatever I'm pursuing or whatever I'm doing at all times, I give it all to him and he will do the rest. When we do everything for him, we actually acknowledge that everything comes from him and what this does, it creates a desire for us to give him our all and seek the many different ways we can bear fruit in his kingdom. And I believe this to be the ultimate calling in my life. That in whatever vocation, whatever strong feeling I have towards a particular occupation, career, or field, I'm focused on being fruitful for him. And this doesn't simply mean working hard for God. He doesn't really care how much we have done in this world for him, for we're saved by grace through faith, not by our own efforts or works. God looks at our hearts to find the motivation behind our works. Is it to be fruitful for his kingdom, or is it, or are we just in it for ourselves? True fruitfulness begins in the heart with the growth of the fruit of the Spirit in us. The more we are in tune with growing in God by completing his image in us and pursuing him as much as he pursues us, God works through us as we become more like him. And we have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control constantly growing in us. So today I'd like to close my message by reading John 15, because I think this parable talks a lot about how we grow in God through our identity in him, our pursuit of him, and our fruitfulness through him. I'm the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You're already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in a vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I'm the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown to the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. 
This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Let's pray. God, I thank you for your pursuit of us every single day, that through the image of yourself that you have put in us, we're inseparable from your wonder, your will, and your ways. That through our identity and your love, you've been the invisible thread bringing us to where we are today. God, I pray that we may pursue you as much as you pursue us, that through hard times, suffering, and uncertainty, we don't lose sight of who we are in you, and that instead of looking away, we look more towards you and see the beauty of how you work through us. God, I find comfort in this truth that as we step in the future and the unknown, we know that you will guide our every step and that all we ever need to do is to remain faithful in you and bear fruit for your kingdom everlasting. Amen.